Hello everyone, Chaos here and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. And today is going to be all about RuneLite. I'm going to talk about some of the most useful plugins that you could potentially use and some other relevant information with this client. But before we continue, about 90% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy this video and all the content we've been putting out uh, these past couple of weeks, a subscription as well as uh, turning on that nice notification bell would be really helpful for this nice little community. As is tradition with a lot of my videos, I'm going to give you guys five very short disclaimers, again, not to make the video too long. Number one, and the most important one, if you guys are not using RuneLite and this video kind of, you know, gives you an idea of trying it out, make sure to go to runelite.net and nothing else, otherwise you could potentially download a fishy client which will steal your account. RuneLite.net is actually the official one. Number two, I am only going to talk about my top 10 plugins in detail, otherwise if I talk about every single one, this video could be up to maybe around one hour long. Number three, for every single plugin, I am only going to mention it briefly as well as showing you little categories which you could potentially have for every single one of them in order to, I guess, browse through them in a more orderly fashion. Number four, I understand that every single plugin in RuneLite is going to be incredibly helpful for their specific situation, but there are some that are too niche to use everywhere, so that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. And finally, number five, and just like in the previous video, remember that this is my personal opinion, and if you don't like my top 10, you can always leave me a comment below and telling other people which plugins you love to use in order for them to try them out and look at the settings. So, that being said, let's go! Hey guys, it's Chaos from the Future, and I decided to cut the following part, which was the brief explanation for all of the plugins in their respective category. Honestly, this video is long enough, and it's really not as crucial as I thought it was going to be. You are currently looking at my personal categories with their respective plugins, and if you want to check them out, just go ahead and pause the video, but let's head into the important part right about now. Alright, it is going to give you a live demonstration of my favorite plugins, and we are going to start with the bank plugin. As you can see, some of these are going to be favorited, and this doesn't mean they are part of the top 10, this just means that I need to easily access them in order to turn them on or off quickly. But we are going to look up the bank plugin, very nice. And as you can see, if I open the bank right here and the settings, it is going to give me an exact price for the GE and an exact bank value for a total of 1.8 billion GP. I'm really sad about this one uh, because whenever when I bought my Tebow, it was 1.1 bill, and so far I've lost um, 200 million on this item, which is uh, kind of sad. But other than that, you can uh, uh, you can see that at the top, if you turn this plugin off. So as you can see, it is not going to give it to you. Turn it back on and you have to reopen the bank. If you go to show high alchemy uh, price, just go ahead and close it again. And it is also going to give it to you. And I guess this could potentially be useful for Ironmen to show what they have in alchemables. But um, yeah, this is kind of like a nice way to... Um, show you how much you have achieved in your adventures. Also, it's really nice, disable left click in the bank inventory, equipment, as well as the looting bag. So as you can see, you know, if I have my, uh, you know, my right click on this one, you know, it, it goes there. But if uh, it, uh, doing this, it just kind of, um, I guess, avoids you doing this by accident and I guess the best one just in case you are doing something that doesn't require to do the unequipment would be this one and as you can see I cannot equip uh, I cannot unequip my stuff by accident so this one is very very useful for plugging number nine I have the grand exchange and if we look it up just to go ahead and check it out we are going to have a little lookup for alt and left click enable notifications for the uh, for the client to tell you if something finished buying in your offers as well as looking at actively traded prices this one is the most useful as well as looking at uh, GE limits uh, or <laughs> enable GE limits on the GE I mean obviously so for example if I grab my Tebow and I want to sell it if I panic sell it it is going to give me an actively traded price you can see that at the current moment it is going for 902 million GP 
but it looks like there are some offers going on for around 915, giving me the idea that the Tebow is going to be rising up in price either soon or just uh, just uh, in the following uh, days. But um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't continue crashing. Also, uh, it is very... I guess uh, interesting to show GE total just in case you have some items here at the Grand Exchange. So let's just, for example, say that I want to sell my Tebow at a, you know, uh, one point um, five. Uh, yeah, so for 1.2 billion GP, right? I sell it, and it is going to give me a little uh, tooltip or like a, uh, I guess, some information as to how much I have in the GE in my current offers. So all of these uh, things will be fairly useful for your GE adventures in case you, you like to merge, you want to sell if an item is crashing or going up, and this one is also one of my favorites. Up next is going to be the skill calculator, and this is going to be another one of the side panels that you can see uh, to the right little, I guess, sidebar, obviously, of rune light. As you can see, there are no... Uh, I guess uh, settings just like these because it is only going to activate this panel which is going to give you a ton of information regarding all of the skills and everything you can do in order to calculate your journey from either 1 to 99 from 1 to whatever level or for whatever post 99 experience you are going for as you can see I have um, you know I guess most of my skills at a nice even to the 1000 number uh, except for agility which is kind of cringe HP because if I'm training you know the combats as well as strength I don't remember what I did but the point is I like to have these you know like uh, up to the you know nearest thousand I guess and this is going to give me a lot of information that I can plan with and let's say that I want to get my room crafting up to you know let's say 30 million experience is that correct no 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 it's a uh, 30 million ah what the hell uh, excuse me I it seems that I cannot count today. So if I need 30 million experience, and let's say I want to do it with mind runes because I well, because I am looking for the pet, I am going to need to craft 817,819 uh, pure essence, actually not the mind runes themselves, in order to get three uh, 30 million rune crafting experience. And you can actually do this with every other skill of your choice. And I guess the most popular one would be something like you know smithing, herb lore, fishing, uh, maybe some theming so this one is also very I guess situational you are not going to be using it a lot of the time but whenever you need it it is going to you know give you some really nice tools and you don't need to go to the internet and look up OSRS you know skill calculator this is all you know everything you need is here so this one is also super useful my favorite plugin number seven is not as useful as maybe some of the previous ones or obviously one of the uh, one of the plugins we are going to see coming up but in my personal opinion is very useful especially in some high pressure situation it is going to be the FPS control plugin as you can see it will uh, be able to limit the global FPS as, as well as giving you an FPS target and the most important one it is going to show you the FPS for you know Know, whatever you are doing in the game there are some areas in which in my personal opinion it is very important for you to have high fps in order for well you to either click or move or attack and honestly this one is not important you know that much but like i said at the beginning my personal opinion i like seeing the fps i'm getting at any current moment for whatever activity i am doing especially if it's something you know like doing hydra vorkath or some other things like that I guess if you have a high enough PC, this one is not very, uh, very crucial because running OSRS uh, or Room Light is not going to be that, uh, you know, bad on your computer, and you are going to be able to handle it no problem. Coming in at number six, my next favorite plugin is going to be the World Hopper. As you can see, it says allows you to quickly hop worlds and. Right away, it may not sound like a very useful thing, but if you open the settings, you uh, you will be able to see that it is going to give you a world switcher in the sidebar. Thank you very much, random event. No, thank you. Okay, uh, I can flex my infernal cape. Very nice. But as you can see, it is not only going to give you this little panel, but in my personal opinion, one of the best things that you can see is displaying the current uh, ping that you have in your world. Uh, me, with my Mexican internet, it looks like 48 is as low as it goes, because if you open the panel here, it is also going to show you the ping for every single world that you can potentially have. So if I order uh, the ping from least to most, you will see that my best ping in any, in, in any given world would be between 47 
and 50. And then the next ones would be, you know, 100 and all the way up to Australian worlds. Uh, Good Eye Night uh, would be around 260. So obviously these would be unplayable unless you are doing something, you know, I guess that doesn't require a, a, a lot of players because I mean look at this one uh, I think it's a free uh, free world 48 players very nice and yeah so this may be more bias in my opinion because the only thing I like it for is uh, for you to show the ping as well as show what other worlds could be potentially used with your current ping so this one very very uh, I guess uh, you know I, I suggested a whole ton but you guys will be the judge up next for number eight I have the XP tracker and as you can see if we go to the settings this is not exactly useful in my very personal opinion because all you need is that if you turn this on it is going to give you this little extra panel as you can see and it will give you access to XP trackers which means that let's say I equip my cape as you guys know uh, hopefully or I guess from some other videos I'm going for post 99 cooking experience and if I start cooking as you can see not only is the experience going to show around here but the experience will also show here in in the sidebar and it is going to give you an approximate experience per hour if you train the skill at maximum efficiency or if not doing it at maximum efficiency it is going to give you very good and accurate information about this the cool thing is that if you right click it and you say add to canvas you don't need to have the panel open and this is going to show in the top left corner i guess the plugin settings are like you know if you uh where is the top left uh I don't think uh, top left information. No, I don't think maybe the, the panel is for this one, but this is just going to give you a very nice, you know, bit of information for your training and whatever skill you are currently going for a 99. My next favorite plugin coming in at number four, we have ground items. As you can see, highlight ground items and or show price information. If you open the settings, you are going to be met by a whole uh, ton of uh, little settings that you can actually tweak. And is you know, it is specifically for items that you want to see on the floor whenever they drop from monsters and maybe some other source. And you can also give them little colors in order to indicate that you got either a valuable drop or maybe some trash. So for example, the very first thing here we have item lists next we have the draconic visage this one is here because i was doing uh i was hunting for the draconic visage in leagues 2 because i needed this item for i guess 250 points so i i didn't want to miss this item and here i have hidden items which are things that whenever they drop i don't really give a fuck about them so you can see we have some leaping sturgeon trout redwood logs so really either things that i drop whenever training uh whenever i'm training or uh things that are really not that valuable and i really don't want to see the text on my screen so what do i mean by this now that we uh, have completed this one, uh, do not hide on tradables and everything, you can you know, actually see this, but the most important part comes right here. You can have little values for whatever amount of GP of what an item is worth, and you are going to be able to assign really nice colors in order for you to notice, oh nice, I got a really good drop. So for example, here I have the... And by the way, I don't know if you can actually see this in the recording, but uh, if not, I'll add, you know, something else to kind of show you what I mean, right? Um, you don't really need to see them, you know, it's just kind of like the explanation. As to if I show you, if I drop these rune arrows, it is going to be a nice white text. If I drop the, you know, uh, 100 sharks, it is going to be blue text. If I walk one more tile and I drop a few prayer potions, it is going to be green text. And obviously, uh, above 1 million GP drop, which for me is like a really nice drop, it will be red text, which is going to indicate that I got a nice big ticket item at, for example, uh, Hydra or I guess Vorkath would be really, really nice. So this one is completely up to you. You can customize it to your own liking. And this one actually has a lot of possibilities for you to enjoy and customize your drop experience. I am going to stay in Lumbridge to show you my number three favorite plugin, which is actually ground markers. As you can see, if we hover over it, so we are going to have enable marking tiles using shift key if we open the settings you will see that they are not that lengthy and we only have a couple of options draw tiles on the minimap remember color per tile show clear option and there are there's going to be another really nice one in which we can label those so for example this is incredibly important or useful
useful at places such as the Inferno or Hydra or places where you need to know where to stand in order to, well, do the activity correctly. So if I show it to you, if I right click anywhere on the ground, it is just going to give me the option of walk here and cancel. But with Rune Light and with this little plugin activated, if I tap shift, and right click the map, you will see that I have Mark Tile. It will show a yellow uh, tile for wherever I am going to be standing. And with the color, you can actually change it. Let's say I want it to be a yellow tile. And you can also customize your little, uh, I guess, uh, color, I believe. So let's go for this one, a nice blue, right? So you are going to mark this one. You can do the same for the other ones. And it is going to give you a nice visual indicator of where you need to stand to do Y. So for example, let's say I am doing Hydra and I want to label this one. Let's say, <coughs> <clears throat> I type fire because I want to do the fire skip or you know if I want to do the lightning let's just say um Lightning, because I want to do the lightning skip, even though you can't really see it that well, especially the blue one, it is just going to be really nice, and you can have it, uh, you know, drawn here in the minimap, so you can also see that. Also, you can see that it will increase the border of the tile, I guess. I've never actually tried this. Does it actually work? It looks like it. Okay, but I'm just going to leave mine at 2, and... <clears throat> Ah, sorry about that one, but I am still recovering from my illness, but that is my number three favorite uh, plugin in RuneLight. Let's go to Priftinus Bank in order to show you my favorite plugin number two, and it is going to be Bank Tags. Now, this one, just like every other, uh, I guess, plugin, is not going to be useful everywhere, but this is incredibly, incredibly useful for whenever you want to bank and do certain activities. If you go to bank tags here in real life. If I hover, you will see that it says enable tagging of bank items and search for bank tags. If we go to this one, you will see that the configuration is not, or the settings is not really that, you know, big, but the big, in quotation marks, part is going to be at the bank itself. As you can see, if I turn this off, it is going to hide the little tags that you can see to the left of my bank. And what is this used for? Uh, let's say I want to do the Inferno and I don't want to click or grab every single one of my items manually. Well, what do I do? I am going to have an Inferno tag. As you can see, the tag is just I and I am going to have every single item over here. I don't know why what my Avernic Defender is doing in the Inferno tag, <laughs> but it is going to give me all of the items that I'm going to be potentially using for the Inferno, making preparation time a lot quicker. So I am going to have a live demonstration for you right here. If you look at the outfit that I am always wearing in my video. Uh, recently it changed to Karamja gloves as well as from Nixi boots uh, because I sold my prims, oh well. <laughs> so let's just say I want to have a bank tag for my outfit. As you can see, I am just going to say videos and then I create my tag and it is going to be at the bottom. Uh, change icon, what about, um, can I do the orb of oculus maybe? Uh, orb or scrying orb, orb of, where, where's the orb of oculus? Um, it doesn't look like the Oh, ah, Oculus Orb, there we go. So if I want to make a video, right, this one is going to be empty. The first thing I'm going to grab is, of course, my, you know, Infernal, uh, okay, so added tags. Oh, it looks like it was already part of, my, part of my outfit. Oh, it's right here. This is the outfit that I used before, aha. But let's just go ahead and give you the live demonstration itself. So I am going to grab the Infernal Hood, and I am going to type a comma, and then we are going to go for videos. Right? So whenever I click this tag, it is going to show the infernal cape, uh, the infernal hood. So I am going to do this quickly so you can see it uh, uh, sped up, I guess, and you will see the end result. All right, I think I actually got everything. And if you look at the videos, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine items. So let's say I deposit everything. I accidentally, uh, you know, uh, click the uh, deposit equipped items. And if I click on the videos tab, it is going to show me every single item that I put right here. So if I want to record a video and I want to get my outfit ready, it is just going to be done one, two, three, very easy, no problem. And I don't have to look for every single item manually. So that is number two. And now for my number one favorite plugin in RuneLight, we have the GPU. And all it says is it utilizes the GPU. As you can see, it is turned on. And from what you will see in most of my videos, it, the 
footage is going to be kind of choppy, blocky, it's because this one is turned off. The reason for this is that even though my computer is kind of decent, even for today's standards, it's like a like an Asus or a uh, Asus, I don't know how you guys pronounce it. Um, it's a nice Asus laptop, and it, even though it has nice specs, for some reason, whenever I try to record OBS with the GPU plugin turned on, it is going to freeze, and that is basically why you are looking at this, you know, kind of blocky, um, I guess, uh, rendering. So as you can see, the tiles are going to disappear. If you open it, you will have a lot of options, and as soon as... As long as you have uh, have it turned on, it is going to make the game look so, so much better, so much smoother, so much faster, that it is just going to blow your mind, absolutely. You have uh, a draw distance for the render, uh, just uh, for you to look at these, you know, like the border of the map, it is not going to be, uh, it, it is not going to disappear that abruptly. And you have some other really technical options, I guess, like uh, uh, color banding, in anti-aliasing, so for example, UA scaling, uh, UI scaling, nearest neighbor, which I don't even know what this is, computer shading, um, the, you know, this one, also, I don't even know what it is, but we also have color blinding, and I guess that is, you know, really cool, but sadly, I really cannot show them to you right now. Um, if you want to give it a try, if you are not using Runelite at the moment, give this one a go, it's really nice, and yeah, those are my top 10 Runelite plugins for the game, but it's specifically for convenience sake, as well as making you, uh, or I guess giving you either a nicer visual experience and some other things that will be useful in every single situation, but are maybe not as niche as the other plugins that we have. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, I will see you next week for a set of, well another set of videos which hopefully you guys can chime in on if I do another poll. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you there.